Welcome back. This is MacMaster4848 here, bringing you the first episode of Let's Talk About Tech, a new series that I've started with discussions about technology, looking at areas such as controversy and philosophy. In this episode, we'll be looking at the Internet. The Internet is a global system of interconnected computer networks that's linked together, creating the web. The Internet is used by billions of users worldwide. The Internet is well known for the HTTP protocol, communication protocols, peer-to-peer -peer networks, and much more. The Internet has been the centre of much controversy surrounding modern-day technology. Where did the Internet originate from? To look at the current and future state of the Internet, we need to look at its past. The Internet originated in the early 1960s. At this time, research started into networks. This research led to the creation of Internet protocols. Internal networks are developed for research and data movement, these networks are connected together, quickly creating a global system of interconnected computers, which is now known as the Internet. The Internet is used in many things. These include education, entertainment, communication, research, and much more. Controversy. There is quite a bit of controversy over the Internet. Most of this controversy relates to Internet censorship, criminal activity, spying programs, its virus-like ability to spread information, piracy, and privacy. Controversy. Censorship. Many countries employ a policy of censorship on the internet. China is a good example of internet censorship, as it is well known for its Great Firewall of China projects. Chinese internet users are blocked access to many websites such as news sources, social media, blogging sites, etc. Internet censorship is expanding to other areas of the world, such as Europe and the USA. A good example of this is the recent revealing of planned censorship of a law-complying news website known as Torrent Freak in the UK. There is a large amount of controversy over countries generally known as democratic and having free media adopting a policy of internet censorship. Illegal content is restricted access to in most countries. Most would accept these blogs, however, great care has to be taken to make sure that an intention of blocking illegal content doesn't stem into an open censorship of the media. Controversy. Piracy. The internet is well known for its ability to distribute piracy content on a mass scale, often on peer-to-peer -peer networks. Piracy content is hosted on many internet websites, either intentionally or unintentionally, as due to mass storage facilities on many websites, it is impossible to control the storage of piracy content. The DMCA law in the USA protects internet service providers from liability when unintentionally storing piracy content. There's been a lot of controversy about the closure of the data storage website Mega Upload for unintentionally storing pirated content. While the website owners fully complied with copyright laws and gave copyright owners direct access to delete content, just like Google and YouTube. The closure of this website led to the deletion of approximately 4% of the internet. Millions of innocent people lost data, harming businesses and many individuals. By the way, I've lost files related to my YouTube videos due to the largest data massacre in the history of the internet of mega uploads. Piracy 2. A large proportion of internet piracy occurs on peer-to-peer -peer protocols such as torrents. Torrents are fully legal and are used for file transfer by millions of people, including large companies, because of the ability to share data between peers instead of using an expensive storage server. However, torrents are also used for piracy due to the convenience and lack of control. There's been much controversy over websites such as the Pirate Bay because of links with the distribution of piracy. However, it should be kept in mind that the Pirate Bay and most torrent sites or trackers act as a method of on contact between people willing to transfer pirated content. The website itself does not host copyrighted content, arguably making it fully legal. The Pirate Bay is also a controversial site because of the policy of not complying with requests to remove data from organisations such as WikiLeaks. Some may argue that this policy may be part of the reason for the media and government's dislike of the website. Spying Many governments spy on their citizens' internet usage. A well-known example of a spying program is PRISM, used by the NSA in America to spy on worldwide internet usage. A large proportion of the public were made aware of this by the well-known whistleblower Edward Snowden. However, it should be noted that information about government spying has been known about for decades, there's been some controversy over the NSA spying program. This is because the spying program breaks the Fourth Amendment, 
which clearly prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures. It can be argued that spying programs are a useful tool for catching criminals. However, most criminals that have the knowledge to take steps to not be traceable over the internet will use highly secure encryption. Many people would agree that catching a few criminals using spy programs is not worth openly breaking the US Constitution, especially as this opens the gates for the US Constitution to be manipulated and changed even further. Privacy or hacking A good thing about the internet is, to not put something on the internet, we will not mind the whole world seeing it. This saying has a certain element of truth, as hackers are very sophisticated and data leaks can lead to any information on the internet, no matter what publicity setting it has, leaking and becoming viral or use of blackmailing. Facebook has been hacked into numerous times, exposing private data. This is the cause of much concern, as people trust Facebook to keep data, such as photos or posts, private depending on the privacy setting. Virus-like spreading ability The internet is well known for being a very useful area of technology, but equally harmful. The internet is fairly uncontrolled as no one owns the internet. The internet can be a great tool for many purposes, but can also be used for malicious purposes. When something gets out to the internet, it can be shared by one person to the friends, and these friends can share this information or data again and so on. This process often happens by chance, but can be forced, and can happen for good or neutral information or data, but also for malicious purposes such as leaking people's private data, also known as a dox. The internet is a great resource for many people, and has been one of the greatest successes of the 20th century. Like many areas of society, there are good and bad sides of the internet. While the internet is a very beneficial invention, we must ask ourselves several questions about it. Can we survive without the internet? Do we rely on the internet too much? Does using the internet impact on physical and mental health? Feel free to answer these questions in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching the first episode of Let's Talk About Tech. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and feel free to subscribe to MacMaster4848 to be notified about future episodes. See you later.